Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love online every Saturday. I want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day. I didn't even know today was Father's Day. And as soon as the thing came, the little notification came across my screen, the Lord started dumping things in my mind, memories that I don't even think about. Go with me to Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, <laughs> which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, if you wonder why I'm chuckling, it's because... I asked the Lord if he wanted me to deal with the day, uh, you know, what tomorrow represents. And uh, I had no idea. Luke 11 popped in my head. <laughs> and the key word I was looking for was Father. Yes. Anyway, let me read it again. <laughs> wow. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight? and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Now, for those of you who don't know what importunity is, is ask and keep on asking, knock and keep on knocking, seek and keep on seeking, you keep on, you keep on, you keep on, till you get the desired result. And that is one of the ways God is telling us we ought to pray to him. All right. Now, because he is our father. <laughs> Moving right along. Oh, let's see, where am I? Verse 9, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall Ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? I'm stopping right there because he's trying to show us what kind of father he is. Now, there are some deadbeat dads out there, and they, when a child comes grown or young, and they have need, the father's got all kind of excuses. Don't bother me. I ain't got time. Don't bother me. Can't you see I'm trying to do something here? There are parents out there, mothers and fathers, that are pretty much deadbeat, that are pretty much abusive, neglecting, or neglectful. And they really could care less what their child's need is unless it fits in with filling their own need, self-serving, so to speak. That's not a parent. God is showing you what a parent really is. All right. Now, what I want to say to you is I understand that some of you don't have the benefit of having been raised 
by a true father, a father in spirit, a father in heart, a father in deed. I get that. So let me paint a few pictures from a human standpoint so you can get what we have in God. Now, when I was reading the scripture that I'm going to read later, which is Psalms 18, I thought about Lynette. And Lynette had a funny way of putting things. It was so cute when she would say things like, God will turn gangster on you. <laughs> and what the Lord showed me during this week, preparing for this message, through a movie, I watched a father who was a godly man protect his family after the country had been attacked and so many had been uh messed up by the bombs and they happened to have benefited by being in the mountains so they were protected from the downfall and or the fallout whatever you call it now the thing that was crazy about it this was a praying man he was a husband and a father of two husband of a wife and a father of two kids what turned crazy with him was when he saw how villainous, how volatile people were turning out of desperate need. The things they, the beggarly elements they would turn to, the, the, the lower levels of behavior they would turn to in order to meet their own need at anybody else's expense. He knew at that point he had to protect his family. And as a father, this man, the first thing he did when somebody pulled a gun on him was he snatched that gun. He took care of the one to pull the gun on him because they were going to hurt his family. And then afterwards, he made sure he and his son had a gun on them wherever they went to protect his sister, his daughter, and his wife. So what I'm trying to share with you is you have the best ally in your back. You have the best ally covering your back, next to your side, in you, around you, working things out for you, going ahead of you, making the crooked places straight and the rough places plain. That means smooth, smoothing out the rough edges, so to speak. He's the one who can do that for you. But see, one of our problems is we don't understand what we have in our arsenal. That is the greatest weapon you have in your life, is your father, which art in heaven. That's your greatest weapon. That's your greatest defense. That's your greatest shield, your buckler, the horn of your salvation. He is your greatest tower. He is your fortress. You have no idea the level of protection you have in God, your father, which art in heaven. So it behooves you to start reading these scriptures to see what he did to protect his own. What the kind of things he did to the enemy of his own. He says in his word, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And what you don't realize is you better pray for the ones that rise up against you. You better pray for the ones that talk smack in your face, threaten you, that 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 do harm to your belongings, that want to do harm to you and yours. You better pray for them because God says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And what we don't understand is the level of anger the level of vengeance. See, like Lynette said, God will turn gangster on your enemies if you're not careful. Not if you're not careful, if your enemy's not careful. But you've got to keep crying out to him. When somebody comes at you, you don't turn to them and go toe to toe, word for word, punch for punch, kick for kick eye for an eye. No, you don't go that route. You run to daddy. You run to papa song. You run to poppy. You run to Abba father. And you 
put the whole problem in his hands, in his lap, and ask him to deal with your enemies while at the same time he deals with you by removing your anger, removing your tendency to get vindictive, and removing your hurt and ang your hurt. Because it's the hurt that turns to anger. Then when the anger brews itself and, and festers, then your mouth starts flapping and you start running around backbiting. Don't go into all of that. Don't get caught up in that trick bag. Handle it between you and God. You go to God, ask him to handle you and adjust your attitude in a way that he would be pleased. Give you a merciful heart, because he does say, to the merciful, I will show myself merciful. merciful. But down further, he says, and that's in the next scripture we're going to read, to the froward, I will show myself froward. So you want to make sure he's being merciful to you. And if your enemy rises up against you, let him be the one to be froward against your froward enemy. Let him be the one to handle him. Because God knows how to hurt him in a way that, that trust me, they'll never forget that that was the hand of God. But you, remember this now, you cannot celebrate their calamity. That's the other side of that coin or else you will negate everything that God will do on your behalf. Your spirit has to be right. That's why I said, while you're asking God to handle them, you make sure you ask God to handle you so that you come out smelling like a rose and you don't get any of their garbage on you because you're not wallowing in it. You're in the face of God. You're bathing in his love. And you're allowing him to make those adjustments in your heart, in your mind, and hopefully, which will affect what comes out of your mouth. So understand, God is a father. Now, I want to share a few little stories with you. I love telling stories because sometimes, you know, how, how they say a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. Sometimes a story will paint a picture that you can't see in words or in print. So let's go to the human side. Mm -hmm. And let's go to my father, my father who was on earth, <laughs> John Henry Love, born 1900. And when I was born, he was 53 years old. So I benefited a lot from his wisdom. Now, what this man did, which I admonish many of you fathers to do, what he did was he spent time talking to me. He didn't just provide. And that man was a major provider. He didn't just discipline. And that man knew how to discipline, which left no emotional or psychological scars on me. Whatever whooping I got, I deserved it and I knew it. If I got slapped, it was because I was talking smack and trying to be fresh, disrespectful, and the like. And he put an end to it. And that ended that behavior. And some of you, you don't end the behavior because you don't deal with it. But I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Let's talk about my father's teaching. There have been times, see, God will download a prophetic anointing on a father or a mother that really intends to guide, lead, and protect their child. And my father taught me a lot. One of the things we talked about today uh, in church, and they didn't know that we were talking about it, but one of the things the Lord had to, I mean, my father, excuse me, one of the things my father had to teach me, and he drilled it. Oh, he drilled it in me because that was one of my biggest weaknesses. I was so easily intimidated and so insecure. My father knew it and he knew why. 
And we won't get into all the whys and wherefores because that's not part of this message. But God healed all that. Right now, we're dealing with what my father saw in me. And he sat me down one day and he said, you know, Patty, you're going to have to learn how to say no. Oh, oh, that was like a cuss word to me. <laughs> it went so against my grain because I wanted people to like me. I wanted approval. I wanted to be accepted. I was so tired of rejection. And I was not behaving out of a heart of love. I was behaving out of fear and intimidation. They'll be mad at me. They'll be offended by me if I say no. So that was one of the things the Lord had to instill. I mean, my father, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm always saying the Lord. So, But my father, I do not get them mixed up, trust me. But my father kept drilling in me, you have to learn to say no. And there were times in my life where he would teach me. He would sit and teach me about people. And he said, the way to know the difference between a user and a taker and a person who really cares for your well-being. If you tell a person no, the person who is with you, no matter what, will understand. They'll accept it and there'll be no hurt feelings. The person who is a user and a taker and a manipulator will be offended. Now, he had me do something. I'm sharing this with you. I'm bringing it down to the human level so you understand. This is how God teaches too. Because God taught me a lot of things about people while I was, you know, dating and going through all that. And, and the Lord would say, do this or look at that or listen to that. And I would be like, Lord, I don't listen, look. And I'd be like, okay. But God walked me through and protected me by bringing things to my attention that I would ordinarily be oblivious to. That's a father for you. So this time, this one chick was always calling me for a ride. And every time I turn around, if she got in my car, she didn't just need a ride to the store. Then we'd end up going to so-and-so's house and so-and-so's house. And I'm sitting in the car waiting and waiting and waiting while she's in there lollygagging. And I, I've just turned out to be her taxi driver. No gas money. I mean, nothing like that. She was not there to be my friend. She was there to take advantage of my car. Now, when it started getting old and it started turning sour in the back of my mouth, I told my father about it, you know, how we don't like to talk to our parents about our personal lives and interactions with our friends. You better start learning to do that. You will protect yourself from a lot more heartache and hardship. I told my father about this young lady and he said, well, next time she calls, tell her this. He said, now I'm going to tell you. You're grounded for a month. You can't drive that car. The car is not yours. It's your father's. And you can't go anywhere for a whole month. So sorry, I can't take you anywhere today. And I was petrified. I mean, let me tell you, you guys, when you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you're not in Jesus, you're not filled with his love, his power, his light, everything. You find yourself being so given to the beggarly elements of life. And I was petrified. Oh, how could he ask me to do that? But by the same token, I understood, truly understood, he was telling me right. I knew my father was right. <clears throat> so when the phone did ring later on that afternoon and I picked it up, it was guess who? And guess what? Did she want? <laughs> sure enough, I ran the script down exactly as my father said to say it. And she sounded so disappointed. She said, oh, I'm sorry. I know parents can really be a, a drag. I said, yeah, girl, I know. 
I never heard from her again in life. <laughs> Thank you, Pop. <laughs> and yes, the Lord let me know he's with the Lord. So what I want you to understand, because I led him to the Lord before he died. What I want you to understand is there is value in having a loving, nurturing, teaching, guiding, strong, insightful, wise parent in your corner. And some of you are spitting on it because you don't understand the value that you have. You don't understand all the pain that they can help you avoid in life because you're too busy being hard-headed, stiff-necked, and haughty. But if you humble yourself and really listen, for those of you who have the benefit of a teaching, nurturing father, pay attention and you will avoid a lot of heartache. Another story comes to mind. I'm not going to drag this out, but I have to tell this story. My father shared with me one day about uh, not only hitchhiking, but getting involved with people I don't know and how I could end up in a, in a drug uh, place where people are dealing with drugs. And if the cops come in and I don't even know what they're doing, I just, I'm riding with a friend. He said, you will be arrested for the same crime. And there goes your record. Let me share this with you. He told me that he prayed for me. As an unsaved man, he prayed for me. That God would open my eyes and help me recognize danger when I see it and get out of danger's way. I was hitchhiking with a friend of mine who happened to be my roommate. I didn't realize what a friend she was not. She has me hitchhike with her to L.A. I know nothing about L.A. except for two or three streets. We're down there, no car, no money, no transportation, on a wild goose chase for adventure. And she hooks up with some guy and says, see ya. And I'm down there stranded. Now, through the night, I'm going to give you a quick rendition. One guy offered to give me a ride. I'm riding with him as he's making all his little drops. I have no idea he's a drug dealer. He walks me in this one house. And there are two people there that look like skeletons. They literally look like dead skeletons with just enough meat on them to hide the bones. Dark circles under the eyes, sunken. I mean, they look like real skeletons. And they were there getting ready to shoot up. And when they got through shooting up and he got his money, we headed out the door. And now we're at this big plush apartment place and this long banquet table full of these bags of white powder. I have no idea what it is. And next thing they're going in and out of this back room and I'm just sitting there like, when do I get my ride home? And when I finally realized when everybody was out, I mean, they were out, y'all. Some had shot up, some had snorted up, whatever, but they were out. And it was like the Lord. See, he looks after idiots even when they're not saved. And the Lord made a way for me to escape. And I looked around and realized nobody's aware of me. Hello? Nobody's responding. If they don't hear hello, they're not going to hear my footsteps. And I tipped my happy hips on out of there so fast and got out on the street. And now I had to hitchhike the rest of the way home. Do you know, do you know that what my father's prayer was answered because God gave me a 360 degree image of what the world really looks like, the ugly side of the world. I knew nothing about all that. I was so green and wet behind the ears. But see, what I want to share with you is because I had a father 
who sat with me and taught me, if a man cares for you, he will do this. If he respects you, he will do that. He won't insist on this, that, or the other. He won't treat you like this. He taught me how a respectful man should treat me. And when I started seeing the opposite in action, I realized it's time to exit because this is not what my father described to me. So I'm trying to share with you, listen to your parents, listen to their wisdom. And for those of you who are parents, quit being so caught up in your own life. Quit being so caught up in your own interests. Don't leave your kids out there for the wolves to come and devour because you got your own needs. No, screw your needs. I'm sorry. I know that sounds cold, but guess what, baby cakes? Your first responsibility is teaching, nurturing, and protecting your kids. And if you're not doing it, you're deadbeat. And if you're not deadbeat, you're sick. And if you're sick, you need to go and get help before you flush your kids down the toilet because of all of your can't help it and all of your selfish ways and your oblivious understanding. Because if you don't have the understanding and you don't have the knowledge, you can't take them any further than you are. But if you know that you're messing up, pray to God to help you, to bring you help. Call out for help. Get counseling for your children. Go to the counseling with them. Don't just send them off so you could have some more free time. All right. Now that I finished fussing, let's go on with the kind of father. This is the part where I thought about Lynette talking about God will turn gangster on you. When I was a teenager, I was going around the corner to the store and I came back and this guy was standing on the corner and he reached up under my dress and he tried to grab stuff. So I slapped his hand away and ran, took off, ran and like a bat out of you know where. And then when I came upstairs, pop, 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 there's a guy out there. So I told him what happened. My mother and father go stepping out on the terrace and they look down the street. We were upstairs. So they look down the street and they see, I said, that's the guy right there. And my father stormed into the hallway, grabbed his coat and, and hat and went downstairs. And my mother was petrified. You're going to get your father arrested. <laughs> but anyway, he goes downstairs, marches up to, I mean, he marches a, a half a block's distance. And that guy's still stupid enough to stand there. And my father walks up behind him, grabs his arm and spins him around. And I could tell he was ready to knock him out. And he points out to the apartment where we were standing watching. And I could tell my father was jamming him up. And when he grabbed him again, the guy jerked loose and took off running. And then my father came on back home. He wasn't arrested. He came back home. <laughs> But what I want to share with you is how a good-natured man, and he was good-natured, how a good-natured man will turn into a monster over somebody threatening the safety of their child. Now, if you as a father are not that kind of man, you better pray because something's going to go awry either in your life or your child's life. Because you're not covering them. They don't have you as a covering. They don't have you, period. Why? Now, I'm going to share this and then I'm done. My father, and I'm going to say it streetwise, knocked up my mother while they were dating. And afterwards, he pursued her all the way to the courthouse to take responsibility for what the two of them had created together. He gave me his last name, Love. He made sure I knew who my daddy was before they ever got married. When my mother finally gave in, he took in all her teenage kids and me, and we became one unhappy family for a minute. We mellowed out after a while. But the bottom line was he told her, she did not ask to come in this world. We did this and we need to take responsibility. 
That's what my father did. My mother didn't pursue him. He pursued her so that they could be a married couple taking care of me. And I thank God for it. I really do. Because who knows what kind of mess I would have been without that covering. So now we're going to go to, and I'm going to stop talking about me because this is really not about me. I'm trying to paint a picture of the sides of a father, the nurturing, the humor. My father taught me to play, to catch a ball, throw a ball, swing, skate, uh, swim, ride the bicycle. I learned all that from him. He taught me, he worked with me in my math. He helped me with my homework. My mother helped me with my English assignments and my vocabulary. I mean, I had nurturing parents, teaching parents. They were there. They weren't off doing their own thing. They were there. They were invested. They didn't do it perfectly, but they were invested. All right, Psalms 18. Now we're going to get back to the Lord. Psalms 18. And I said that for both sides. I want to say this too before I read this. God will protect his own. Like Lynette says, he will go gangster. But listen to this. For those of you who are have the unmitigated gall to rise up against God's people, you better watch it. When he says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm, he's not playing. He's not talking out the corner of his neck. No, you better listen. Because those of you who rise up against God's people, for whatever reason, even if you think you got the right to, you better go to God with your complaint. Because if you go to that person, if you cause them any threat, any harm, any damage to their property or damage to their person, their body, or the thing they're doing for God, God will rake your behind over the cold. That's your warning. Hands off, mouth shut, unless you're crying out to God. You do not. Go up against God's man or God's woman. That's that's off limits, y'all. You may think you got the right, but no, you don't. They're human just like you. They go to the bathroom just like you. But guess what? That's God's person. And if they're an agent for God, you are trespassing. I don't care if you think you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. You are trespassing when you mess with the children of the Father which art in heaven. You may not get yours now, but boy, toward the end, you won't feel some pain you never thought was humanly possible when God gets through taking you to the woodshed or sending your behind to Hades. All right. Now, let's go on to Psalms 18, starting at verse 1. And we will read until I feel like God says stop. So don't get bored with his word, y'all. It's such a lack of hunger for his word nowadays. All right. <clears throat> I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. It's like a fortress. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Now, we're going to scoot down a little bit because all hell is breaking loose and he's crying out to God. And when he cries out to God, right, uh, he busts through the darkness and the clouds and he's riding and he's, he's coming to his rescue. And it says, verse 13, the Lord also thundered in heaven and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. <sighs> then the channels of water were seen and the foundation of the world was discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of thy breath of the, the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. 
He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Listen, y'all, you got enemies, don't fret. You got an ally. He's the best you could have. I don't care how many enemies you got. None of them can defeat your one ally. Remember that. He's got all power, all authority. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. There is nothing impossible for him. Remember that when you worry about your enemies and what they might do to you. And also read Psalm 27. That will lift your spirits, knowing who you have on your side. All right. Now, Psalms 27. All right. Now we're back to this one, which is Psalms 18. And now we are at verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. See, that's why you can't lower yourself to someone else's level when they're acting a plum de fool, showing their big or narrow behind out in public to, to shame you. No, you keep your mouth shut and let the Lord fight your battles. All right. Now, 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. Listen to this. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. Mm, mm, mm. God knows how to bring down your enemies. He is your father. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Now we're going to go further down because I want you to hear some of these bottom lines here. Okay, 34. You know how your father would teach you how to throw a punch or teach you how to protect yourself? Defensive training. All right. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arm. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Let me say this real quick about teaching my hands to war. Whether you're a human father or whether those of you have to turn to your heavenly father, you get into his word. He will teach you that sometimes silence can be your greatest weapon. Silence, keeping those lips sealed keeping that flat between those lips inside where it belongs. Mm -hmm. You can dig your grave with your tongue, you know. Or you can spread light. But whatever you do, remember that there are times, even when somebody is talking about you like you got 10 tails and five ears, there are times while they're laughing at you and quackwine, the best thing for you to do to let God handle your battles is keep that mouth shut and let your father, which art in heaven, show out for you. And when he gets through, baby, you're going to be looking around for all your accusers like Mary Magdalene did. Hmm? Look around at all your accusers. And he will ask you, where are your accusers? And you will say, I see none. Because mm -hmm. God handled them. You let God handle your accusers. You keep your hands off. Off limits, baby. You stand within the protection, under, in the hiding place, under the shadow of the Most High God. And let him daddy you. Let him cover you. Amen? All right. Now, let's move on down. And I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Mm, mm, mm. 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? 
Who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand holdeth me up and thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they will consume. That's what you do in prayer. That's taking authority. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. I've seen it. I've seen people come at me and I keep my mouth shut and I cry and wow wow to the Lord. And when it's all said and done, there's nowhere to be found. All that woofing, all that threatening, and nothing is done. And they're in the wind. Like a you know what. All right. Next thing. 40. Thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Now, I'm done because I don't want to get caught up in, in a whole lot of stuff. I'm trying to paint a picture of God as your father. He will provide when nobody else can or will. He will provide. He will send you things that you didn't even think he cared about because other people would be telling you, oh, don't be bothering the Lord about that mess. You better talk about something important. Guess what? God delights in making you happy. Not that you're going to be happy every day of your life, but he has those moments where he just wants to shine his love on you. He wants to treat you to special things. And it's from him to you. Nobody else is in that. But God decides, I want to do something special for you. I want to show you, as Psalms 86 says, a token for good. And you start to notice the things happening in your life. You know that's God. You know that's God showing you his favor. Not that you earned it. You never will. Not that you earned his love. You never will. Not that you're good enough. You never will be. But God's love. Because he is a father. He loves putting a smile on your face. He loves you running to him, jumping on his lap as he wipes your weeping eyes through his word. Try not to get emotional because I know what it's like for God to wipe my eyes. I know what it's, God, what it's like for God to remove my hurts. But see, some of you, the problem is you keep everything inside and you won't pour your heart out before him. That's when you get your help, y'all. When you pour your heart out to him, you got to run to him. You got to humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm too weak to handle this. Lord, I'm too messed up. This thing is tearing me apart. Help me. Take the hurt out. Take my anger out. Enable me to forgive. And I don't want to forgive, but if you help me, I will. Be real. Be transparent. And you will see so much more intervention from God. Little cry, little result. Much cry, much result. Much obedience. Woo! Plenty of favor. Little obedience, little favor. You want the favor of God working on your behalf, y'all. Forget that pride. Forget how somebody made you look in public. Forget your desire to defend yourself. Shut your mouth. Let God be your father. Let God be your protector. Let God be your defense. Let God work out the vengeance. And whatever you do, don't celebrate when they get theirs. Amen. God bless you. Happy Father's Day, whether it's on the human level or the supernatural level. Every day is Father's Day when it comes to God. Amen. And I praise my Father, which art in heaven. God bless you.